43, I wanted to go over the answers to the bonus deep dive that we have going here. So if you haven't read through the deep dive, take a moment, read through it. And I always want us to start with what is the variable? What is happening in this problem so that we can figure out if we have a numerical or categorical variable? And as, as you read through this, hopefully you see that the variable here is the number number of goals that was recorded for each student. And, and we have some first graders and some fourth graders. But there is my variable. I can see it also right here in this table. It is numerical. Right? And on top of that, it is discrete numerical right? because I would count the number of goals that a student scored. I wouldn't measure the number of goals. And so we have a discrete numerical variable. So we have three options for our graphs, or at least three options that we go over in our class. We can make the box plot. We can make a histogram. Or we can make the stem and leaf plot. So I'm going to show you how I did the um, histograms, and I'll, I'll touch on the box plot and the stem and leaf plot a little bit later. But basically, if I look at my data here, right, this data is going to go into L1, and my frequencies are going to go into L2, and those are for first graders. And, and if you scroll down, you notice that the variable is the same, and the spread and range are the same also. Both groups of kids scored somewhere between zero and eight goals. So I'm still gonna leave this data in L1. I'm just gonna move the fourth grader data to L3. So I'm gonna be managing three lists. And when I go to graph this, like I said, I opted, well, I used my computer and I opted to make a histogram. I'm gonna squeeze this in just a little bit so we can see it. But I want you to see there's the number of goals here is labeled on the x-axis. You see frequency labeled on the y-axis. So I, I wanna make note that I did label my graphs. All right, and then I also scaled them. And when I say scale, I mean that I put numbers. So you see zero to 60 here and zero to eight here. And let me undo that just so it's not so crowded on my graph. I also color coded the first and fourth graders. So blue goes with the first graders, green goes with the fourth graders. And I personally like to put the frequency counts on the bars. I think it makes my graph more complete. It's not necessary, but I think it's nice. I left space between the bars. We typically do that on a bar chart, not so much on a histogram, but I did want to distinguish the different numbers of goals there. So that is, that's my histogram, my comparative histogram. If I wanted to try something like this on my calculator, I could, and I'm going to use the app version. Let me go home here. Um, I, I put, I preloaded my data into my graphs and you can do this on the physical calculator as well. I just wanted to show the app version in case you were using the app. When I go back to my key, you'll see all the screenshots from the actual calculator. But if I want to make a graph, I'm going to go into my stat plots. Let me edit this one out. I'm going to make a histogram here and I'm going to go L1 against L2 for the first graders. All right, but I'm going to add a second list, or excuse me, a second plot. I'm going to make my second histogram. I'm going to go L1 against L3 for the fourth graders. All right, so I have two graphs that are going to pop up. I hit my graph button, and that looks like a hot mess. So let's fix that. I'm going to go ahead and hit Zoom, Stat, and now I can start to see my graphs. They're not quite the same colors as the one I made by my computer, Right, we had blue and green there, but I can see purple and red respectively for the first and fourth graders. Now, if you want to, you could change your bar width if, if you felt like it here. I could make my width, well, actually I do have it at one. I can see it down here in the bottom right corner. You can see I can adjust it. Um, I don't recommend doing that. I'm gonna go back to one. Actually, I guess I need to just type in one here and call it a day. There we go. And let me hit enter. Ooh, it won't let me hit enter. I'll just do that. There we go. So that is my graph or my graphs on my calculator. So let's head back to this question. Now, again, like I said, this I did it with my computer. But the next thing we have to do is talk about comparing these graphs. All right. And whenever you want to compare graphs, you need to mention your socks. All right. And you need to use comparative language. And when I say comparative language, I mean things like larger than, smaller than, similar to. So you can see that for the shape, right, the, the, uh, the shape for the first grader skews right where the shape for the fourth grader skews left. And I can see that because 
I'll even color code my highlights, right? The blue graph skews right and the green graph skews left, which is fine. We're just going to note that. Um, neither distribution has outliers. I'm going to come back to that um, when I get to the next page in my key. I'm going to show you how did I calculate that safety zone and how did I assess that um, completely. Um, fourth graders scored more goals on average than the first graders. If if I'm skewing right and left, I can see that my means are gonna adjust up here. So where the median is probably around two, the mean's a little bit higher for the, the first graders. And where the median here for the fourth graders is maybe six, I'll have to look at my data. The mean would be a little bit to the left of it, but still the mean for the first graders over here is gonna be less than the mean for the fourth graders. Uh, and that would be true for the median as well. So I, I wrote average here, but I could have also said the median was higher. And I will show you again on the next page how to get that on your calculator. I could do this part in my head because both groups have the same spread and range. So you see me highlighting the comparative language here, right? You see a whereas, you see neither, you see more, and you see both. So I'm comparing my socks. Now I want to talk about again how did I get the safety zone and how did I get these means. So let me scroll down here all right and you'll be able to see this key I'll put it live on canvas but I also want to talk about how I could do this on my app. So I went and calculated the mean for the first graders and the mean for the fourth graders. I also found the necessary stats to create or construct a safety zone so Q1 and Q3 Q1 and Q3 respectively for the four, first and fourth graders. So you see me calculating my safety zone, right? I, I did the IQR, I multiplied it by one and a half, and then I subtracted that number from Q1, added it to Q3, created my safety zone. And then when I look at my max and my min, right? I have zero and eight on the first grader side. Both of those are inside the safety zone, so I'm okay. I ran through the same process for the fourth graders and my safety zone was negative one and a half to 10 and a half. And again, my max and my min are inside of that. So I had no outliers. I also opted just for fun. I made two compare or two parallel box plots and there were no outliers shown on the box plots. And that matches my numerical work up here. So both ways I'm concluding, hey, there are no outliers. Now let me show you what this would look like on the app. All right, so I can get out of this and I can say, hey, let's do one bar stats. And let's go L1 against L2, right? And if I hit enter, there are all of my stats. You can see my mean, right? You can see Q1 and Q3 there. I can also go ahead and do L1 against L3 for the fourth graders. And there again, you can see my mean and my Q1 and Q3, so I can construct my safety zone. I could also go ahead and make comparative box plots or parallel box plots, all right? And when I do that, let me go ahead and hit graph. And then I'm just gonna pinch this in. That's the one nice thing about the app. You can just pinch it and adjust your window. And again, you can see there are no outliers in either of those graphs. All right, so before we get out of here, let me, let me head back. And I do wanna show you a couple of um, past submissions from students. They made up their own graphs and I thought they were awesome. So you see here, this student kind of made a line graph, like a histogram, but without the rectangles, right? Because there's technically a rectangle here and a rectangle here and a rectangle here, that kind of thing. But I thought he was really creative with how he did this. So I thought that was awesome. And then if we scroll down here, I had a different student that kind of came up with this histogram stem and leaf plot hybrid, which I thought was awesome as well. So you can see that there's the stem heading down, right? And then here are all my leaves, but the leaves were just the frequencies of the number of goals kicked for the first and fourth graders. So that was another one that I thought was great. And again, for him, I, I love this message. It was a little harder than he thought. It was awesome. All right, thanks so much for hanging with me. I hope this helped out.